Hello friends! Hi friends, how are you today? My name is Sunny. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if it's not your first time. On this channel, we like to go thrifting, we love DIYs, we love upcycling, many things. And today is an upcycling video. I don't know if you guys remember, but some weeks ago I purchased this blanket, duvet cover, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it's a blanket. I thought it was super cute. It's kind of like quilted kind of fabric. It has these beautiful motifs going on, it has flowers and butterflies and so on. Very, very cute color. And I was thinking of doing a two-piece set, which I'm not sure if I will be able to do or not, to be honest. I've done a lot of like research, how do I want to do it? And in my idea, I want to do a two sets consisting of a short and a nice little jacket. A jacket that I could wear it either or clothes or I could wear it on top of like a shirt that like I'm wearing today. This is my idea you guys. I have been doing some research and I wanted to use a free pattern so I can share it with you guys. You can always uh, cycle anything that you find at the thrift store. Sometimes we find fabrics, in this case it's a quilt. I'm scared of cutting into it. I think it's a queen size duvet cover so I think I have enough fabric to do all this and I'm just going to start I don't know I don't even know if I will finish this video although if I upload it it's because it's finished just to let you know that my mind today it's like will I get to do this project or not let's see you guys I so the other thing that I bought firsthand was the bias banding that I will be using for this one I couldn't find exactly the same tone of pink so I opted to buy a, how do you say, a guinam bias banding. I bought this one as Spotlight. I know it's not the same, but it's the most accurate one that I could find. The pinks that they had were like too bright and I didn't really like them. So I thought that mixing a pink with a white in a guinam kind of pattern, I think it would look cute. And this one actually, like the bias banding will be in the lining of the coat. You won't see while I'm wearing the coat, it's just when you take it out. And also I bought pink thread, just to match the, um, the fabric. I'm going to be using a fabric that I found in Mood Fabric for the part of the jacket and it's called the Hazel Coat or the ha yeah the Hazel Coat and I will be using that one. It's a bit different of the previous coat that I did. This one has the lining in the middle of the back if I can remember so it's a bit different and you don't have to sew the sleeves to the coat so the sleeves already come in the in the pattern. I don't know if it makes sense but we will be going into that and for the shorts I'm going to be using a pattern from Rosary Apparel that I would also link it here in the description of the video I'm very excited I don't know if it will even match or not and oh I forgot to tell you the coat that I got from the pattern it's an actual coat but I'm going to make it like just over the hips I think and instead of going for like an oversized size like I always go I will try to go something more fitted that I think it will look cuter with the shorts. At the same time, I'm scared and excited. So I don't know why I'm so nervous with this project. I hope it results in something very cute and that I can cherish and give another life to these thrifted duvet. Let's start cutting the pattern and let's start cutting the fabric also. As always, the pattern takes half of my living room well no actually the whole of my living room i'm going to yeah i'm just going to start cutting and i'll put the fabric also so you guys can see it All right, you guys, I've started sewing. I wanted to show you a new technique that I didn't do in my last project when I did the quilted jacket. I think this technique is better. I started by putting together the two back pieces. So instead of being like one whole one, it's two. So we have the seam in the center. I put the two right sides together and sew it. And then to hide the seams, what I've done is 
to put a bias banding so what I did was put it flat and I think it looks very good I think this finishing touch is going to really make the difference I'm just going to continue with that so what you do is you put the bias banding and then you sew it flat so you sew it in the two sides of the bias this is the back part now what I'm going to do is align the two shoulders with the front parts and I think I will have to sew that one first yeah I think so yeah I'm going to sew the two shoulders and then I will put the bias banding also there and then I'll do the seams or should I do it the other way around I'm going to decide and, and now I'll tell you because I'm I'm not sure if I want to do First the shoulders and then the sides. I think that's the correct way to do it. I'm going to do it like that. Okay, so I've just put the two sides of the shoulders, like the front and the back, together. Like from the shoulders to the sleeves. Now what I'm going to do is what I did at the back. Do the bias banding so the ending is more neat. Going to give it a press and I'm going to add the bias banding for this part before we go to the sides of the jacket. Let me give you an update of what I've done until now. So I've joined the back and the front here in the seam here on over the shoulders. I've also finished the seams with a bias banding. So now it looks like a cape actually. We're getting there. And then what I did when I was cutting the fabric i actually cut the front pieces right at the edge of the blanket i did this so i didn't have to do like these hems but what i did now was to do a nice row here of stitches so it doesn't move the lining with the front part and i think it looks okay let me show you this is if i put the cape on this is how it looks right now. I have to attach now all these side seam and then we'll have to do the finishing touches or the hems, the color, which I don't know still what to do. And also the closure. Should we add buttons or no? I'm still thinking about it. Let's go with the side seam. Let's see how we go because I want to add a bias banding but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to add it flat or I will have to add it like folding in and all that. Let's see. Hello friends, how are you today? It's a new day and I'm going to be showing you how I'm going with my coat. It's inside out but I will show you now. So this is what we've got. It looks huge here but it's not that huge. So yesterday night, as I told you, I was going to do this seam here. What I did was cover it up with the bias banding as I'm doing with all of the seams. And you guys I have to tell you for these kind of jackets is the best thing. My next steps are going to be, I'm going to close the, well close, yeah, I'm going to do the hem on the sleeves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them once and again, so I don't see any seam here. Then what else I have to do? I have to decide on the length of of the jacket. I don't, I'm not sure if I want to leave it to this length or cut it just a little bit shorter. I have to keep in mind that I still have to do all the hem in this part here. I'm just going to maybe grab some needles and just like try to figure out what length I want to give it. What I'm going to be working today it's going to be the color. I have decided that I want to do a color. I've been watching watching a few videos just to know how to do it and I'll try to attempt one. I actually want to do a collar with rounded corners so I'm going to be trying that. Also I have decided that as a closure I want to put some buttons. So I went this morning to Linkraft and I bought some pink buttons. I wasn't sure which color I wanted to add and I was trying to decide. I don't know why it takes me so long to decide on the buttons. I know it's just like a simple touch but I don't know it takes me a lot of time. So I bought these pink ones. I mean they're not exactly the same pink but I think they will do. Maybe they're a bit shiny here. So I will be doing 
some buttonholes. First time doing buttonholes. These are going to be my next steps. I start by measuring the neck hole area and subtract 2.5 cm or 1 inch. This will be the length of the collar. This is in order to have a space for the overlapping of the front section. For the width, I measure it from an existing jacket that I like the size. It turned out to be 20 cm or 8 inches. I then fold it along the width and then in half to cut the corner edges. Right sides together, I sewed the two small angled sides. Then, to attach it to the jacket, find the center of the collar and the jacket. Face the right sides together and with the help of needles, pin that in place. Now, it's time to sew. As you see, we've got the collar already. I need to press it, I know, I haven't done that yet. So as you can see, I have all this raw edge here. So I have decided that what I'm going to do is use the bias banding and do it like in the sides. So I'm going to cover this and then I'll do a little folding here so you cannot see it from the front of the jacket. Uh, I don't know, in my mind it makes sense. I'm going to finish these raw edges and I'll come back to you. You guys, let me show you what we've got. So I just finished the collar. Probably it's not, it's not ironed yet, but I've got to tell you, I'm very happy with it. And now, so as you can see, I left this space here because the jacket, of course, as all jackets, they overlap. This is where we will be adding the buttons. And now guys, I have to finish these raw edges of the sleeve. And also I have to decide whether or not I want the coat shorter or not. I'm still like, I don't know, I'm still deciding. I'm gonna jump and do the sleeves and the hem. And then the last thing will be to add the buttons. But I'm so happy that I did this color for the jacket, for the jacket yeah the jacket coat whatever i'm just so happy and i'm going to show you the inside of the color because i think i did a very good job by the way i'm wearing my mermaid t-shirt this is the interior of the color so as you can see i've added the bias banding all around and once it was on what i did was fold here at the top of the two sides i fold it over so we don't see the bias banding from the outer part and then i was only going to do this part of stitching so this part here but then i was like you know what i want a really good finished touches for this jacket so i did this row of, of stitches all around the jacket and to the other side. So I think the sleeve now, oh, the sleeve, sorry, the collar is way more attached to the jacket and we won't have any frays. And I'm so, so happy, you guys. Let's continue with the sleeves. Good morning, my friends. I'm going to show you where we are at, at with the with the jacket. I don't even know how to talk anymore. This morning I did well this morning, like ten minutes ago, I did a press in the collar so you can see how it looks. Very cute. And yesterday night I finished the sleeves. As you can see, they're all done. So what I did was fold them twice and then I did two stitches. I did one stitch right next to the edge and I did another stitch just here. So it looks like, I don't know, I think it looks more professional. Yeah. And now I'm going to do the hem. I've decided I'm not going to cut it because I want to do the effect as in the sleeve. So I'm going to do the same size of hem. What I've decided is I'm going to fold it twice and I'll do two stitches. One next to the edge and another one just like two centimeters up. And I'll do that all around the jacket. And once I have that done, I will just need to add the buttons we're almost there and then i'll have to adventure myself to do the pants which i have to tell you i'm not sure how they're going to look my mom was telling me that they're going to look like super puffy with this kind of fabric i think the fabric 
on the pictures that I sent her looks more bulkier than it actually is. It's not that bulky. It's not like the last jacket that I did. Let's finish the jacket and then I'll adventure myself with the pants. I actually forgot to tell you that I broke two needles while I was doing the, the sleeves. It gets super bulky when where the seams join. So yeah, I broke two needles. Just, just wanted you to know. Okay, friends, so before I go on to sew the hem, I did try it on just to make sure that the length was the one that I was after, just in case, once it's sewed, it's a really pain to undo it all and so on. I just did that and I just did a quick press, just a little bit, so it's easier to sew on. And now we have to sew the hem of the jacket. Hello my friends, how are you? I've put here my trestle table so I can cut the fabric better and I have here my new scissors. I was begging for some scissors and I went the other day to Linkraft and they had a 40% discount so I was like, I'm getting them. I really, really need them. The other day cutting the fabric for the jacket, I was feeling so stressed. Oh, I'm kind of like pinky because I have the fabric here. Every time I try to cut, my scissors got stuck and so on, you know. Good news, I finished the jacket and I'm so happy and so proud. As you know, yesterday I had to do the buttonholes, sew the buttons, and I also had to finish the hem. So I started the day by finishing the hem. And then in the afternoon, I did the buttonholes and I sewed all of the buttons. I sewed in total six, but it took me like almost an hour. I don't know why. Like I'm not used to like sewing by hand I think. Today you see me like this while well, I'm in my like short pyjamas because it's so hot outside. It's like 30 degrees. I just did a jacket but I know I will be wearing it because here in Melbourne the weather is so crazy so probably in two days I will be able to wear it. And the jacket is here you guys. I don't want to show you to you yet. Ah, I just love her. She is pretty. And now what I'm going to do, as I told you in the beginning of my video, is try to do some matching shorts. I've got to tell you, my mom doesn't have any faith in the shorts. When I told her, like, I'm going to do some match matching shorts, she was like, I don't think so. Not because I cannot do them. I mean, it's going to be my first shorts, actually. But I've seen a video and they look, like, pretty straightforward. But because of the fabric. Mom says this fabric is too bulky. I think I said it before in the video. Let's try and do it. She can see how cute they look. <laughs> I have a tutorial that I'm going to be following from Rosary Apparel. It's a tutorial. To tutorial. It's actually some pyjama shorts, but who knows they're pyjama shorts, only you and I. Hopefully I have enough fabric for the shorts and if not, I was thinking of maybe doing a skirt. I think the skirt is what is expected, but the shorts I think it's something like more, I don't know, more different out of the box. I don't know. Yeah, I want to do some shorts. I'm going to see if I have enough, enough fabric. By the way, the pattern that I'm following comes with some pockets. I'm not going to put any pockets. It's a bulky fabric, so I don't think pockets will actually look okay. And I have to tell you a funny thing. I actually started doing these shorts the other day, but I accidentally messed up with the pattern and I need to undo one of the sides and do it again. And I did this one with the pocket, just for you guys to know. <laughs> and this pattern is actually super easy. It's just two parts, the front and the back. So we need two fronts and two backs. Okay, I think I have enough fabric. I didn't know I was filming actually, so yeah, sorry for that. I think it will do. Let's start. All right, you guys, we've got it. Two front sides and two back sides. I think we can start like sewing now. Let's see. <laughs> oh, this is super tall now. Um, yeah, let's start sewing. Okay, you guys, so I start by putting right sides together, front and back of the pants. And now what I'm going to do is sew all over this edge. That's what the video said. 
because I'm not going to put any pockets. I have the notches here so I can guide with those notches. And now I'm going to sew that. Actually, it would be nice if I get some needles first. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to do it like so fast when no. And by the way, you guys, I'm not putting a lining in this one because it's just too bulky for my sewing machine and I was struggling with, with the jacket already. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. As I did with the jacket, I've joined the two sides and so that I don't have any raw edges, I've added the bias banding. Also, I did this because I think it will look cute as continuation of the jacket. You're going to see the double stitching here. So it looks like uh, made on purpose that yeah, it is what it is. Now I'm going to do the bias banding on the other one that I have it here. I don't know if I explain it with the jacket. I'm putting the bias banding like in a flat way so it looks very nice and you don't see any raw edges all right you guys you can see my face of excitement because the next step is to sew here the crotch seam seam crotch crotch seam yeah but before i did that i didn't want to end up like the pants that i was showing you before which i need to fix because i did something wrong and i wanted to make sure that once i had this sewn and i put them together i actually had the two backs and the two fronts facing each other which I do, so I'm so happy. So now I'm going to proceed and do the brush seam. You guys, this project, Janelle, if you're watching me, like, thank you, because it's so entertaining. If this one results good, I won't stop making this kind of shorts. I know they're pyjama, but for me, if I find like cute fabrics, I could actually wear these like to the beach, in the city, if you style it with a nice shirt. And by the way, I'm wearing this shirt because it got a bit chilly right now. And I'm waiting for my lunch. I ordered veggie pad thai, that it's amazing. And find the... <laughs> the sewing machine foot. All right, let's do this. I'm back you guys, I just had lunch, which I have to say, they put me like a lot, like I put my plate and then I have two more dishes. So yeah, I will be eating pad thai for the foreseeable future, <laughs> at least for two more days. Anyways, I pinned together the two parts. Looks a bit weird now, but I know it's the magic. This is what it looks like. I put like the seams together and I pin it all. And now I need to sew all around here. I need to sew it and that will attach the two parts of the, of the pants. So yeah, let's do that. All right, you guys, a moment of truth. I've done all the stitching here. Let's turn it upside down. Yeah, the crotch is matching. All right, they look like pants. <laughs> I die, of course, I need to put the elastic. Not looking bad, although I think they're a bit short. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do the leg here. But anyways, I think what I'll do maybe is just put a bias tape all around here and then I'll just fold it okay, so it's not that short. Okay, anyways, I'm going to do the bias tape for the part that I just sewn so it looks better and doesn't frame or anything. I'm going to do that, you guys, and I'll be back. Okay, you guys, the seam is finished with the bias tape. Now all the inside of my pants, it's perfect, no raw edges. So now this is the situation of the pants, as I was telling you before. Now I need to do the waistline, which I'm going to actually do it with the bias tape and then I'll fold it and I'll leave a casing for the elastic. Okay, you guys, I've sewn in the bias tape to the waistband. So now what I'm going to do is fold it and I'll do a stitching and I have to fold it to the size of the elastic. Well, first I need to calculate how much elastic I need. I don't want it like very tight. I actually want it to be like pretty comfortable. I'll just do around my waist, but I won't like stretch it 
a lot you know only a little bit okay you guys i've managed to put the elastic and this now looks like some pants <laughs> and now i only need to finish the hems so the hem i'm going to do to to do it exactly the same as the waist i'm going to put some bias banding to the edge and then i'll fold it i'm actually going to do it like fold it the minimum possible because i don't want them to be like super short and i don't want like my uh, cheeks showing okay you guys we finished the project if i'm being honest that i have to be of course i finished the project but i didn't have time to film it because i don't know if i tell in the video before but i wanted to wear this coordinated set for the melbourne fashion week yeah i got to wear it i will show you guys some pictures yeah we finished it my last clip i was going to be finishing the pants here they are i did finish the hem here and the jacket you guys i'm just so in love with this jacket you know now we're heading into summer and maybe i'm i haven't got a chance to wear it a lot although here at night it gets a little bit chilly and i will try to always wear my jacket and i'm so happy with the result you guys it was the first time that i saw buttonholes and i also twitched a little bit the pattern that i used the pattern didn't have a color but i thought it would be nice to add this kind of like cute little color I would have loved to make it maybe a bit more oversized. This was it and I think it looks cute. The two coordinated set. As I told you, I wanted to wear this project for the Melbourne Fashion Week. I wanted to wear something that I made myself and also I wanted to emphasize the importance of upcycling. These fabric was a duvet cover that I thrifted it and I made this two set and for the fashion week I styled it with some lace white stockings I also put on my red Mary Janes and to further Mary Janes I added uh, beneath my jacket a red top although you cannot actually see it from the pictures because I was thinking of maybe opening the jacket and closing it but I wore it the whole day closed stuff here there some videos of my whole outfit I also did myself a handbag this is the handbag I didn't have time to record this one but I will be making a video explaining how I did it this was just like super last minute thing I will be doing a video of this because I think it looks super cute with the super exaggerated bow I had so much fun on the Melbourne Fashion Week. I met a lot of people. I also got very lucky and got a few pictures taken by street style photographers that you can see also here. They're just amazing pictures that I will save and show my children in my future. <laughs> I just love them. I would also credit the photographers in the description so you guys can check them out. Yeah, I'm just like super happy that I am upcycled project got so many attention and I think I have to be proud of myself trying to change a little bit like the mindset that if you have an event you have to go and buy new something that maybe you don't wear anymore so I think it's very important to start thinking outside the box maybe wearing something that you already have in your wardrobe or making something new with an item that doesn't really have any more use I found this do not cover it was in very good condition at this thrift store and I made it something else that I could actually get use from. I think it's just a very nice concept and to think more about our planet and how we can make the textile industry just to make it more of a circular kind of economy or circular fashion. Hope you guys have loved this project as much as I've done or at least half of what I've done because I have really enjoyed it. I have really gone outside my comfort zone. Super happy and proud of myself of have made this. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys and see you in my next video. Bye!